Welcome to episode 452 of Salcedo Paranormal, and tonight I am sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences. Whether they're your own or from others that you trust, happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for being here and listening. Whether you are um, at on the live stream or you are listening, you listen through the podcast or YouTube feeds, or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. Uh, there you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. I always want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exiled Minds podcast, for producing the show and putting it up on the station. If you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others and rate and review the show on your favorite podcast platform of choice. Also, I've written some paranormal fiction and nonfiction books you can check out on Amazon. And uh, I have a Patreon page, uh, which will be uh, releasing the first content on that page that I created uh, a little while back. Um... Basically, that will be there'll be one show there every month for anyone who signs up uh, on any mem- membership tier, and uh, that will be a true paranormal stories on the web show. Um, so you're welcome to do that. And also, if you want to just make a one-time donation, there are links for PayPal and Venmo. Uh, if you want to help out, help out that way, um, help is never expected, but always appreciated as there are always expenses in doing these shows, from equipment to uh, research materials to travel expenses. Uh, As I will be going to the Mid-Michigan Paracon this year, this November 4th and 5th, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, that's in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, at the uh, Soaring Eagle Casino and Resort. And uh, all those links for all the different ways to support the show, and along with the link to the convention, can be found in every episode description on the podcast and YouTube pages, and also on Discord. So I think that covers everything. Um, so I think I can get on with the stories here. Thank you all again, as always, for uh, for being here. So let me get to the stories. And uh, we'll go from there. Just um, earlier today, I made my reservation for the hotel room for that uh, mid-Michigan Paracon, so I'm really excited about that. Um, starting to get things organized for that, and uh, really looking forward to going there and and uh, talking with everyone and making some recordings of myself, I forgot to mention that. Um, just giving my thoughts on the experience, and then also if... Uh, Anyone there is willing, then I'll get some recordings of other people, either sharing their experiences or talking about their thoughts on the paranormal, and then I'll be sharing those recordings uh, once I get back home from that. So, anyway, um, so let's see here. Going to the stories here. This first one says, Something strange happened about ten years ago in Ireland, where my family is from. My family, originally from London with Irish ancestry, I guess that's what they mean, uh, frequently visits Ireland. We had gone to a pub and then headed back to our uh, Airbnb around 10 p.m. The road between the town and Airbnb was quiet. It had hills and a few houses. We saw a fire in the hills to the left of the road. At first, we thought it was a house on fire. My family, which was my parents and my brothers and I, 
saw the burning house with flames and smoke. My father has relatives in the town and was worried it might be a cousin's house. Either way, we were all worried about the possibility of people being inside the house. My father dropped us off at our Airbnb and went, uh, decided to go back to offer help. I had a bad feeling about him going back. I also felt a strange pull towards the, the scene. My father returned later and said that seeing the house still on fire, uh, mentioned seeing, I'm sorry, mentioned seeing the house on fire, and but couldn't find the way there. He decided to return in the morning when it was light to locate the house. That next day, we drove back to the spot, but found no, no burnt down house or any evidence of a fire. We asked relatives in the town if they had heard about a fire, but no one knew anything about it. We still talk about that night today and find it strange that we all saw something that wasn't there. My parents, who don't typically believe in paranormal or ghost stories, cannot explain this incident to this day. So that's where that story ends. Um, it sounds like they saw either into the past, or I guess possibly the future, but into another time. Um, and uh, maybe there was just something that happened there that uh, they they couldn't physically couldn't get to because for them at the current time there was no road that was they could easily find to get there I'm guessing based on the story um, I've heard of people seeing buildings and then and then going back there and finding them not there usually you don't hear about those buildings being on fire but also once in a while I feel like I've heard maybe a, a handful of stories about People seeing buildings at one moment and then not seeing them at another moment. And then one or two times, besides this story, I've heard of the buildings appearing to be on fire. And if it is such a, um, a major event like that, where it's a, a place that's burning down, and especially, obviously, these people in the story don't know what happened, but if there was anyone that was in the location, or multiple people, maybe that energy from them, unfortunately, passing in that way, could possibly generate the image of that, uh, if if we're not going along the uh, time anomaly route there. Um, but, um, but yeah, I don't know about that one. That's uh, It is odd that they couldn't find their way directly to it. They could only see it from a distance. I'm wondering if there really wasn't a road that went there. I'm guessing if you go far enough back, I don't know how far back you have to go. I'm just trying to think because I don't want to be... <laughs> I don't they had some kind of roads, not maybe not pavement, but still something. But um, that detail is odd in that story. <clears throat> so... I don't know. That's a that's an amazing one. I'm glad that there was um, nothing going on in the present, or at least in um, in the town at that moment, um, that the family was there. But uh, but yeah, that's quite the thing to see in the middle of the night, um, and then not be able to get to it. So, but uh, who knows? So I don't know. Um, Going on to the next story here. Let's see. Get back to the file. There we go. And I right, gotta scroll down a little bit. There we go. Okay, this one says My son worked two jobs, one of which was as a night watchman at a cemetery. Once in a while I bring him food and accompany him on his rounds. Despite not, uh, not being easily spooked, my son was tired one night and cold. 
night supervisors from off-site made sporadic visits to prevent sleeping on the job. One night, while at work, he decided to sit in the heated company truck to rest. As my son started dozing off, someone shook his shoulder and said, Wake up. Just as my son opened his eyes, the off-site supervisor drove by and waved. My son, fully awake at that point, waved back at the supervisor. My son told me about this that late after, uh, later, and I told him that some spirits have good intentions and that one must have been trying to help him out in return for his work at the cemetery. So that's where that story ends. I really like that in a way. Whatever the reason is for whoever was there to be there, they were also somehow aware of the situation and sort of made sure that this this guy didn't get in trouble for sleeping on the job. And it worked out. Caught him, caught him just in time and helped him basically uh, be awake enough to uh, pass uh, an inspection in a way. And, uh, yeah, really neat story there. It's it's just um, it's one of those cases where it's a, something unknown going on, but it's uh, for a, a good reason. And uh, it worked out for the person experiencing it. It's amazing that... Um, I'm wondering if it's because it, he, he was it was if it's because he was asleep, so he didn't have time to think about it being weird or or scary. It's amazing that he didn't really get frightened by the experience. I guess the writer did say that the guy, which is their son, didn't get spooked easily. So that maybe maybe that that's why they didn't uh, freak out by being uh, touched and and shaken gently. I'm guessing awake by an invisible force but um really neat story there and uh the writer could be right about that about maybe a spirit um liking the person maybe liking the job that, that the the son was doing and uh helping him out a little bit making sure that uh again he didn't get in trouble with his his um the supervisors there so neat story and uh, every once in a while I get one like that where it's just, someone's looking out for whatever reason. And uh, then you get stories like that. So, moving on to the next story here. This one says, my sister, a cousin, and an aunt and I visited the graveyard to honor my grandfather's birthday. My aunt attep attempted to light a candle on my grandfather's grave. The candle burst into flames and lit itself, burning steadily. None of us found it weird or were surprised at the time. We all felt a sense of comfort coming from the area. We only realized how strange it was when we left and sat in the car together. We all simultaneously freaked out about the incident five minutes later. Also, it was a cold, snowy, and windy day, which made the experience even more unusual. No one had visited the grave for a few weeks. We had buried our grandfather with his favorite lighter as a joke. The entire experience was weird. And that's where that story ends. That is amazing. Um, there's a, a, news, a news show I did a while back where this one article talked about the possible different abilities of supernatural or paranormal entities. And one of them was, of course, manipulation of <clears throat> excuse me, the elements. And uh, it does seem like maybe... The grandfather, I'm guessing, um, 
somehow was able to uh, heat up that air. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, get that candle going. <laughs> sort of maybe even as a returning, uh, as, as a responding joke to the one that the people in the family had done by leaving the lighter with him. I wonder if that was some kind of a sign like, hey, I got your joke. Um, that seems possible. That is amazing. Um, every once in a while, I will hear of a story or an experience where uh, candles will either be lit or blown out without anyone being there or or being close enough to the to the candle to uh, to affect it. And that's always amazing because that's... I guess blowing it out might be easier to explain drafts, wind, whatever. But when you're lighting something and you're not using a lighter, <laughs> um, that really is amazing. And But then you had that comfort that uh, the family felt, which is also amazing. I think if there hadn't been that, then I could see everyone freaking out, thinking it was something wrong. But um, But yeah, really neat story there. Uh, just seems to me the feeling I get from it is that it was the grandpa saying, oh, very funny, and sort of um, responding in his own way. So I don't know for sure on that, but uh, that's uh, maybe that's just my own sense of humor of something I would I would end up doing. But um, but yeah, neat story there as well. A couple of stories about uh, about. Um, Graveyard cemeteries, uh, right in a row there as well. So, um, going on to the next story here. This one says, "This is something I experienced in a restaurant in a very small town in Michigan. Ghost hunters visited the place years ago to investigate paranormal activity." Two ghosts are said to haunt the restaurant, a little girl and a man. On my first day, a co-worker confirmed the presence of the ghost. And immediately after, a tool used for grabbing pizzas fell to the floor on its own. Over time, other strange things were reported, such as the ghost turning on a radio that was unplugged. During a busy Friday night with a karaoke party going on, we heard a loud noise from the condemned apartment upstairs, which was always vacant. Something charged across the floor with loud steps. A moment later, a stack of heavy hotel pans I don't know what they mean there. Around 40 pounds total of metal were thrown to the ground in the kitchen. I asked the manager if uh, what had happened. I'm sorry, not that. That's the other line. Uh, for confirmation of the ghost just before the incident. And there were multiple witnesses, including the dishwasher as well, who saw the pans being thrown. Four people heard the running across the ceiling, the ceiling, or the floor, I guess they mean, and one person, the dishwasher, saw the pans fly across the room, with many others hearing the noises as well. I find it impossible to doubt what happened, unless it was an elaborate, uh, an elaborate prank. So there's that story does sound like there's um, some poltergeist-type activity going on there. Um, I don't know uh, what the source is. There's not really any apparitions along with it, but there's sounds and, um, and then the objects moving. So I wonder if that's a connection to the apartment above them that, that, is, um, that is not being used. Maybe there's some history there. I don't know. But, um, really, uh, that's quite a lot of activity there. And, um, 
Now, I've heard over the years this that, that one possible explanation for sort of objects moving might not always be a spirit. It might be more of um, the energy from people, their own minds, generating this energy. And if you're if several people hear something that is unexplainable, I wonder if that in some rare cases could generate enough energy um, to cause things to move. Maybe it's not super common, but if it's a rare enough thing, it only happens here and there, I wonder if that could explain it. Because you do hear about people, um, objects flying around because of the energy coming from one person. And um, so who knows what's going on there, but um, really neat story there as well. Um, I'm glad that the nothing flew at anybody, but um, but yeah, that is... Uh, that is odd. So let me see how big the next one is. And, uh... Alright, I think I'm just going to do it here. This one says, I had experiences at, as a child where I saw figures in my parents' room while the lights were off. The house I grew up in was over 200 years old and has several odd features. There were two specific figures that I saw. One male with a large hat standing in the doorway to the dining room and another taller figure near the bathroom. I couldn't make out anything else about the t that figure, though. The taller figure. The figures appeared as shadows or silhouettes in the pitch black and went through the same motions whenever I saw them. I saw these figures on multiple occasions. I never asked my parents if they could see the figures as well, so I don't know if others witnessed them. My recent interest in the paranormal has made me reconsider these childhood experiences. My parents have also mentioned strange happenings in the house, such as the TV turning on or acting funny, and issues with remotes, and cameras, and hearing strange noises. I wonder if these experiences were more than just a child's imagination. And given the other experiences, the story, that's in this story, given the other experiences that the parents have been having, I would say it seems like more. Um, I mean, I guess maybe the child could be having, having seen, I don't know, their imagination could be playing with them, and then there could still be other things going on there, but I don't know. I tend to think kids um, are good at spotting the paranormal um, because they, they don't have those um, those ideas of the paranormal, paranormal being not real sort of ingrained in them yet. So, and then you, when you combine that with the parents having experiences later, to me, that um, makes me think there's something going on there. So, I wonder about the history of the house and the land, of course, as always. Um, same with that um, restaurant and apartment above the restaurant from the last story. There's always so much in these stories that we really have no way of knowing. So, But um, it's still always good to check them out, just in case, and... When you listen to or read enough of them, you do find patterns, which is always, um, I think it's part of the main reason why I like doing the show is, or one of the main reasons, so. Um, but I think that's it for tonight. Thank you all for listening, and I will talk to you all on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.